how to make a paper server in Minecraft 1.20.1. Well, would you want a paper server? Well, maybe you want plugins on your server. Or maybe you just want your server to be more efficient than a vanilla Minecraft server, even if you don't want plugins. Well, this video is going to show you exactly how to make a paper server. There's two ways of doing this. One allows anyone to join your server. Your server can be public or private, and that's using our company, Simple Game Hosting. The second way is on your own computer, but there are some limitations to that. If you start the server on your own computer, it's only meant for your friends, your family, Family, people that you would trust and invite over to your house. On top of that, you're going to need a good computer. While paper is more efficient than a vanilla Minecraft server, it still does require a decent CPU and a decent amount of RAM to run, especially as you add more plugins and players. In addition to a good PC though, you'll also need good internet, upload download speed, because this is using your own network connection. And with it using your own network connection, that means anyone who gets the IP address of the server that you started on your own computer can DDoS you, they can hit you offline, and they can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, which again is why this is only meant for your friends, your family, people you can trust. But what if you want a server that could be public or private? Or what if you want a server where you don't have to worry about hardware, you don't have to worry about anything? All you really have to do is get the server and play the game. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in, which you can check out at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple. Once you're here, just go ahead and click on the Get Started button, and then select how much RAM you want your server to have. For paper servers, you can do two gigabytes, but four gigabytes is recommended. That'll allow plenty of room for players and plugins. Once you click Get Started, it will go ahead and automatically select the best location near you. If you want to switch your location, you can easily do that here. We've got more locations on the way all the time. The most important part of this though is this the version drop down box. Here you want to go ahead and select paper latest right like so and that means paper is going to be installed on the server once you get it purchased. Go ahead and click continue. Confirm that everything is as it should be here. I have uh, two servers because this is the second time I've recorded this part of the video, but make sure everything is as it should be here. The data center is correct as well as the version is paper latest. Click checkout and go through the checkout process. Once you've finished, you want to get here. This is our panel, right? So after you've checked out, you will want to get to our control panel. How do you do that? Well, we have an email. So obviously you'll get this account created email. And once you're here, click the set up your account button. Doing so will have you create a password for your panel account. So remember that later. And then once you've created that password, you will land on this page. Here's where you'll see all of your simple game hosting servers. Most likely you won't be like me. You'll have one and go ahead and click manage server there. Now at this point, your paper server is started. All you've got to do is click copy on this IP address up here in the top, right? Just literally click on it to copy it. And guess what? It's then going to go ahead and be pasted into Minecraft. You can play on this server. You're good to go. If you want to allow your friends to join, just give them this IP address. They'll paste it into Minecraft and they can join as well. If you want to add plugins, just click on file manager up here at the top, navigate to the plugins folder, and then click upload and upload your plugins. Once you've done that, go back to the console, click this restart button, and you're done. By the way, at Simple Game Hosting, we also have amazing live chat support that you can reach out to anytime, day or night, and be able to get live chat support as well. Just click it down here and go through and contact us. Nevertheless, that is how you can start a paper server with Simple Game Hosting. Again, that's the first link down below to breakdown.xyz slash simple. But what if you don't want to start a Simple Game Hosting server? What if you want to start a server on your own computer? Well, that's where this comes in. This is our in-depth guide on making a paper server, and welcome to the part of the server that's going to show you how to do do it. Now we do have a text guide and that's great if you want to go through things at your own pace or if you're like me and actually like reading tutorials, which is weird because I'm the video tutorial guy, but that's why we have these written tutorials as well. Nevertheless though, if you're following along with the video, once you're here, go ahead and click on the yellow download paper MC button to be taken to paper's official download page. On this page, we want paper obviously. So go ahead and click on paper here and that will take us to the 1.20.1 download page for paper. As you can see it's paper 1.20.1 and down, where do you click? Well, you click right here. You click the big blue download button. Paper will then start downloading right away. All you need to do in the bottom left is click keep or save depending on your browser. It might be saving the bottom left. It might be in the center of your screen. Just save the paper file that's downloading. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And what we want to do is go ahead and create a new folder on our desktop. So right click, create a new folder. And you can name this folder whatever you want. I'm going to name it paper 1.20.1 server, but you can even name it simple game hosting if you wanted, because that's the best way to start your paper server. Nevertheless, with that done, we can go ahead and move the paper file we downloaded into this folder. So we can go ahead and navigate to our downloads folder that can either be done like I just did, or you can just search for it in the start menu for your downloads folder, and then go ahead and drag and drop paper from your downloads folder to the folder that we created on your desktop. 
Once this paper file is on your desktop, we want to rename it. So go ahead and right click on it, click on rename, and then just title it paper, right? Like so. It might be paper.jar, and that's perfectly okay as well. That's going to depend on whether or not you have file name extensions checked. As you can see, if I check that little box, it's .jar. If I uncheck it, it's just paper. So whatever it is, that's fine, but it needs to be named paper. Now what we want to do is right click and create a new text document. We can just leave this named new text document and open it up with notepad. Then go to the description of this video where we'll have this. These are different codes for the amount of RAM you want your server to have. I'm gonna add two gigabytes to this server. So let's go ahead and copy this, come back over to the new text document and paste it in right like so. Once you've got this pasted in, what we can do is go ahead and save this. Again though, just make sure it starts with Java and ends with pause exactly like mine. And you didn't get any of that, like for example, header in there. So let's go ahead and click File, Save As. So again, that was File, Save As, and then you want to name this run.bat, run.bat, right like so. There we go, run.bat, right like that. Now don't click Save yet. You want to make sure you save type as all files. So run.bat, save type as all files, and click Save. Now, if we go ahead and close out of this, we can come back in here and we have this run file. This should be a Windows batch file, and you might have the .bat at the end of it if you have that file name extensions checked. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and double click on this run file, and it's gonna try to start the server. Um, it's gonna fail. The reason being, we need to agree to the Minecraft ULA, which we don't even get until we try to start our server for the first time. So as you can see, the server's starting, things are working great, and then eventually, it's gonna tell us over here, you need to agree to the Minecraft ULA to run the server, press any key to continue. So we go ahead, we press any key to continue, and then boom, here we are, we have the ULA.txt file. Go ahead and double click on that, and then assuming you agree to the Minecraft EULA, which we do, change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. TRUE exactly like that. Then click File, Save, and now when you double click on that run.bat file, your server is going to start. Now at this point, you're the only person that can join your server, but I do think it is important that you join it just to make sure everything's working as it should. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick jump cut to open up Minecraft, and then once I'm on the Minecraft main menu with the server started, which as you can see it is now doing over here, then I'll show you how you can join your server before moving on to port forwarding and allowing your friends to join it. All right, so as you can see, the server is starting on the left, done there, and Minecraft is open. We can go to multiplayer, click proceed, and we can then go ahead and click direct connection. You can also add this as a server if you want, but I'm just gonna use direct connection today. Once you're in the direct connection or where you wanna enter in your server's IP address, you're gonna enter in local host. Now, you're the only person that will use this as the way to join your server, but it will allow you to join your server and get online to test things. So once you do that and click join server, you'll see us join on the left-hand side and we'll join into the world here. Once we are in the world, we can see that we can move around, do all that stuff. But again, you're the only person that will join this way. Your friends will join using your public IP address after you have port forwarded. So let's go ahead and do it. To do that, we wanna close out of Minecraft. We also wanna stop our server properly. To do that, that means come over to the server here, type in stop, right like so, and hit enter. That's gonna save things. As you can see, it is saving right here all of the stuff involving your server, making sure it shuts down properly. Always do that when stopping your server. Nevertheless, we can also close out of this folder because what we need to do is open up command prompt. So go ahead and open up the start menu, type in CMD, command prompt will appear, and then in command prompt, type IP -con -fig, IP config exactly like this, and hit enter. Then we wanna go ahead and make a note of some of these numbers. I'm gonna use notepad, but you can literally use anything you want. Post-it note, doesn't matter. The things we want is our IPv4 address and our default gateway. Now, both of these can be found here in command prompt after we go ahead and type in IP config. As you can see, we did there, and this is what appeared. Now, the IPv4 address is right here, and in my case, that's 192.168.1.28, right like so. For you, it's probably completely different, and that's why I'm showing you how to find it here. The default gateway for me is 192.168.1.1. Yours might be different. And if you have a numbers and letters next to default gateway, look on the next line because under that, you'll most likely have one that's just numbers. That's the one that we want, the one that's just numbers. Don't worry about the one that's numbers and letters. Nonetheless, with both of these numbers acquired, we can then go ahead and open up our browser and specifically open up a brand new tab within our browser. What we wanna do in this new browser is go ahead and take the default gateway that we got earlier and paste it right up at the top where you would normally type in 
the breakdown of XYZ, simple game hosting, youtube.com, right up here at the top, and then hit enter. Some sort of login box will appear. Mine just kind of pops in from the top. Yours may be in the center of your screen. Yours may be a literal pop-up. It really does depend on the router that you have, but then you want to enter your router's username and password to log in. Now, here's the deal. That's not your Wi-Fi password, and it's different for every router. So we have an in-depth guide on how to find your router's username and password. This covers everything you need to know, and it gives you method one, start there, all the way down through method five to get your password for your router. Once you've got that, you can go ahead and log in, which I'm going to do, and then we can port forward. So here we go. I have now logged into my router. Your router is probably going to look completely different, and we have an in-depth guide, of course, on how to port forward on any router. It goes over the most popular routers out there today, from Spectrum, Netgear, Asus, Com Comcast, Cisco, all those popular routers, and even if your specific router isn't on here, that's okay. You should still probably watch the video because it's going to give you some different terms and a lot of router software is very, very similar. So once you kind of learn one, you can kind of pick it up from all of them, especially if you learn three or four or five or six, which is what this video can allow you to do. Nevertheless, though, let's go back to our router here and we want to click on advanced and then we want to click on advanced again, and then we want to click on port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it may be an advanced advanced like it was for me. It may be in security. It may be in apps and gaming. It may be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in NAT settings. It could be in NAT security. It could also be in an administration tab, a firewall tab, or it could just say port forwarding somewhere random on your router. I've also seen it called single port forwarding. Nevertheless, once you've found port forwarding, it's pretty simple to get it set up and running. And luckily from here, everything's relatively similar. The only difference moving forward is going to be whether you have a big list of just empty boxes. That's the case. Start with the first one. Or if you don't have that, you have to add a port forward or add a new custom port forward. As you can see here, that's what I've done. And then what we want to do is for the service name or ID, that's just what this port forward is for. This is for a paper Minecraft server. So that's what I'm going to name it. You can literally put anything that you'll remember what this port forward was for later on. For protocol, you want to select TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. No matter what, you want to make sure both of these are selected. It may literally just be the word both. Then for external port, internal port, first port, second port, anything involving the word port, you want to enter in 25565. So you have external port or outside port, 25565. Internal port or inside port, guess what? It says the word port, 25565. Lastly, for your internal IP address or your local IP address, this is going to be the IPv4 address we found earlier. So in 192.168.1.2. Eight, right like so you can select it from a drop down box here as you can see right here mine is and you may have a drop down box as your only option if that's the case to select the computer you're starting the server on now in most cases you should be good to apply save create the port forward but some of you will still need an outsider external ip address luckily every person watching this video if they want their friends to join their server will need their external ip address so in the description we have this what's my ip address and it will show you what your ip address is now all you can see here is 43 you can also see the information someone can get from your ip address which is why it's so important to only give this out to people you trust and if you want to have a server that's a little more secure a lot more secure then you can check out simple game hosting nevertheless let's go ahead and click on our ip address here to copy it right like so once you've done that, if you needed this for your port forward, you can come back here, paste it in, save it for your port forward, all that stuff. But now what we're going to do is go ahead and start this server. So start your server by opening this up and double clicking on run.bat, as well as opening up Minecraft. Then once we're in Minecraft, we'll join using our public IP and we'll be good to go. I'm also going to give you some information that you should know about running your server. So here we are. The server is up and we are in Minecraft. We can now go to multiplayer, click proceed if you need to, and then direct connect. Once we're here, we don't want to use localhost. We want to paste in our public IP address. Now, again, all you can see here is 43 at the end of it. That's by design because you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. If you did, you would use simple game hosting. Nevertheless, though, let's go ahead and join our server by clicking join server with the public IP address there. And on the left-hand side, you can see we joined, but we do have the uh, next line kind of blacked out here because you can see the public IP address in the console as well. But nevertheless, here we are. We are on our server. Things are working as they should. However, what if for whatever reason your friends can't join using your public IP? Well, you may need to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. Luckily, we have a complete guide on this in the description. 
All right, here it is. This is a complete guide on how to allow Java through your firewall for a Minecraft server. It covers everything. We've also got how to fix a broken Minecraft server. That is worth checking out. And we have this, which is how to add more RAM to your server, if you're interested in that. Lastly, this is a server for plugins, and we've got guides on those as well, linked in the description. It's truly an amazing place down there for helping you with your Minecraft server. But at this point, your server is started. By the way, if you can't join via your public IP, that's perfectly normal. You can always join via the local host. You are the only person that can join that way. Your friends are the only people that have to join via the public IP. Anyway, my name is Nick. We'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, and I am out. Peace.